Hey, Florian Pro. So we're going to do another week of That's a Wrap. And this is uh, something I like to do just to wrap up some of the posts that I've seen and then conversations I've had with other flooring pros in coaching calls and even discovery calls where talking to people, it's really interesting to find out um, some of the challenges that people are having and some of the s simple solutions there are for it. So uh, this is also going to be kind of like a mini masterclass. We're going to cover a lot of topics in this one. Uh, I think you're really going to enjoy it. All right. If I can make my clicker work. So setting goals for 2024, something we're going to talk about in the uh, SIF, uh coaching uh, group coaching call that we have coming up on Tuesday. And uh, setting goals is something, that, one of the challenges is everybody has a different method and different way of setting goals. Sometimes you crunch in numbers or you're putting things down that aren't really meaningful to you. So making sure that whatever you put down as a goal, that that's, it's something that means something to you. So certain numbers, I notice that people track their numbers. If the numbers don't drive you, if they don't mean something to you, then it's, it's not as useful to you. It may be useful to you in the long run, but trying to do things that are meaningful to you now, it's one thing I never cared for business plans because a business plan, you look at it once, you use it to get a loan, you use it to get into a building or something like that, maybe to get accounts. Um, but having goals, having a plan uh, uh, works much better than uh, that first business plan that you made, which you don't go in and constantly change your business plan. We probably should, but your goals are something that you're you should be reviewing weekly, monthly, you know, and reviewing those with your team. So top line revenue is the easiest goal to set and it's the easiest goal to reach. Um, just figuring out how much you want to make in sales this next year. Because once you have that top line revenue goal, then you can build your roadmap to get to reach that goal. So having a goal of hiring a couple people next year or moving into a showroom is the, the good goals to have, but... Um, does it fit into your overall plan? So it's good to start off with that big audacious goal and and then build your roadmap to work into that sales revenue goal. It's the easiest one to set. Uh, reaching for a 30% increase over last year. And that's a good place to start. So if you did 700,000 last year, you know, you're try probably trying to get over that million dollar hump. But a 30% increase over that is $210,000 more in revenue. So in talking to people, and I did talk to somebody that was doing about 700000 last year, and it's just so many really good opportunities to bump that up and get that going. So we're going to talk about that more later on. But weekly meetings, weekly meetings are good in... Now, when I was just a, a two-man band, uh, it was just me and one other guy that I was working with. We we did have we had meetings every other week. Uh, eventually, we got to weekly meetings, just even having three or four employees. So um, having those are important because you can look at your numbers, go over your numbers, see where you're at, review where you're at, and see what you need to do to move the needle forward. And I know you talk all the time. But that's different from having an organized meeting where you go over specific tasks and specific numbers um, where you take a, a good view of it rather than trying to do that every day at every minute, you know, where you feel like you're talking to each other all the time. Well, you should have that organized meeting discussion. Even if you go out for lunch, you know, bring a pad of paper with you, go over where are we at sales wise, where we need to get to. How far are, are we off our goals? Are we hitting our goals? Um, what jobs do we need to close that maybe we can work on and do something different? So that weekly meeting is very important. Um, that big audacious goal, put that on your whiteboard. If you don't have a whiteboard, go out and get a whiteboard. Everybody needs a whiteboard. Uh, you know, one of the guys I follow and love is Jason Goldberg. That guy's got a, his conference room is like, 30 whiteboards in it, <laughs> you know, it's wall to wall. The whole conference room is filled with whiteboards and he's had times where he's filled up all those whiteboards with plans for the future, which if you watch the guy, he's just moving at lightning pace 
uh, growing his uh, America's Fourth uh, source just amazing that it's moving day to day for them. So they're expanding and growing and moving always. But he does that with planning, planning on the whiteboard. It just, it's not a thought that just comes out of midair. Uh, track and measure every month how you close and how you're reaching your goals. So that's what we talked about in the weekly meetings. It's important to track and measure where you're at. That's how you get to improvements. So knowing your break even number, this is something we don't talk about near enough and we should. Um, I should fix my slide, but I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, knowing your break even number is that's how much you need to get to each month just to break even. So what is it that you need to cover all your expenses, including paying yourself? So figuring out your break even number. First, what you want to do is figure out all your expenses that aren't related to a sale. Expenses related to a sale are um, if you pay commission to a salesperson, that's related to the sale. If you, you're you paying the supplier, that's related to the sale. Um, for some of the materials, uh, like pad or any of the materials that you use on a job, you're not buying that unless you get a sale. You're not paying installers unless you get a sale. So expenses that aren't related to a sale are, you know, maybe you have a warehouse manager, your rent, your utilities, your insurance, your marketing. If you have a bookkeeper, if your salary isn't related to the sales, some people tie it into their sales, which is brilliant. It makes your break even lower. But if you're paying yourself a salary, build that in. What, what are your monthly expenses? So let's say your total expenses are 23,000 and you take those and multiply it by four. That means pretty simple math, right? So you figure out you need to do 92,000 a month in order just to break even. And what that fact, how that factors in is if, if it's based off a of 40% margin, and let's say you're paying salespeople about 10%, that gives us down to 30%. We give another 5% as a floater and uh, for additional expenses or mistakes. And that puts our profit on the job at 25%. If your profitability is 25% on the job, multiply that by four to get to 100%. That's how that works out. You can go deeper into the explanation if you need it, but just a simple math, simple way to figure it out. Take your total expenses, multiply them by four. So something that's cool about this, knowing that your, let's say that your total is 92,000. Let's say that's where you're break even. And you wanna get 40, 45%, 50% margin on those jobs. Get them as high as you can. And you get good margins for your jobs. Now, let's say you get a big project. You're bidding something at fifteen, eighteen, twenty thousand dollars, and you really want this job. So maybe you're cutting your margins a little bit. After you get past your break even, cutting your margins a little bit is okay because you're at a good place right now where for that month you're very profitable because you covered all your expenses. You've covered all your overhead. So towards the end of the month, and a lot of people will have that at the end of the month, reaching out to customers saying, hey, it's the end of the month. Uh, we're trying to reach these sales or we can include your order with another order. Um, give people a reason, give them a little bit more of a discount and try to close some more sales at the end of the month. So your profitability is really good towards the end of the month once you get past your break even. OK, and then, of course, if you're at a lower margin, if you do a lot of commercial work, um, if you have in-house people, there are other variables. So you're going to have to do some different math to figure out what your break even is. And that's something I can help you do if, if you'd like help with that. So give me a call. Let's go over some of your numbers and we can figure out what your break even is. All right. Marketing strategies in this uh, tough environment. You know, I've been preaching this forever, the pay-per-click advertising, it's one of the best advertisings there is. And you think about it, you're spending money for direct traffic to your website. Um, people click on your ads. That's what causes them to charge you for the ad. So you're only being charged when somebody is interested in you, in your company, when they click and they go to your website. That's pretty good value. I mean, you can't get that anywhere else. So if you advertise on the TV, 
or you advertise on the radio or you send out a magazine, you hope somebody sees your ad and you're putting that money out there in hopes that people see the ad. Well, with pay-per-click advertising, you are only putting money out there for people that are actively going to your website and are interested in you. So what you do from there, that's where a lot of strategy comes in. So how is your website? Is it converting? Um, one of the biggest mistakes people make with pay-per-click advertising, first of all, they don't spend enough money. So the the web, and this is the web company's fault because the web company says, what's your budget? And you say, well, you know, you haven't done this before maybe, and maybe you'll spend 800 bucks and you think that's a lot of money or you'll, you're willing to spend $1,200 and you think that's a lot of money. And they say, okay, well, what keywords do you want us to cover? Well, and you give them tile and carpet and hardwood and you know, luxury vinyl. And then we want to do, we do remodeling too. So we want to make sure we do that. And you water it down with all these keywords and then what areas do you want to cover? And then you give them the territories, the areas that you want to cover. And it just waters down your your whole efforts. You might as well throw that money in the in the wastebasket. So if you're not spending a whole lot of money and, and under $3,000 a month is not a whole lot of money. Um, you know, even at 3,500, you want to keep that really tight with your keywords and your area. Uh, but dominate one category. You know, spend fifteen hundred dollars just on carpet, or if you're doing uh, vinyl, you're probably gonna need a minimum of twenty five hundred to do vinyl. Uh, tile, you could probably you probably need closer to two thousand. Hardwood, about fifteen hundred will work for hardwood too, because it's not as competitive of a category. Um, so some of you guys out there that specialize in hardwood, you guys should be dominating that category. And you shouldn't be wasting your money on flooring, okay? You spend it on the category that people search for the most. What And, and they might search for flooring the most, but the people that are, if you break it down by the categories, you'll see that the individual categories are more popular and those will convert better for you, especially if your website converts. So you got to make sure that that website is makes it simple for people to engage and go to the next step, which is coming to the showroom or just booking an in-home estimate. All right. So that's something that we'll look at as well. If you want to reach out to me, we can look over your website. Um, keep your circle tight around your showroom. So again, uh, you're not investing a lot of money, then keep that circle tight. You, you know, you can dominate. We dominate carpet in our area. And uh, we beat Empire, Home Depot, Lowe's, anybody that advertised carpet in our area, we were number one or number two every time. So we could dominate one category and built up a $5 million a year business doing that. Okay, invest in good SEO. So it used to be SEO was really cheap. I mean, you can get, you can get by somebody, you, you know, you hire the web company and they do the SEO for you. You're not paying a lot of money. But there's experts out there now that are really doing a good job on SEO. And so spending $1,000 to $1,500 a month isn't unusual. And somebody can dominate your category without spending pay-per-click advertising money. Somebody can dominate just an SEO, good SEO alone. So I'm reaching out to some other people that are doing a fantastic job with this lately. Um, so that's something you want to consider, investing in good SEO advertising and interviewing people, making sure that they're doing a good job. Social media paid and unpaid. So um, if you do Facebook advertising paid, uh, you can get a lot of good results. You can get a ton of leads doing paid media. Uh, it's just that you have to manage those leads. So if you're willing to manage the leads, then you could do fantastic with paid media. I've got a great resource for that uh, if you're interested. And then, uh, but unpaid leads, there's no reason that you shouldn't be shooting a video and putting up and posting uh, a sale, a special, um, or accidentally running into your garage door, <laughs> something that goes on, uh, an install that's currently going on. There's all sorts of things that you can promote that get attention. Networking groups are great. Uh, and you go to them and, and meet people that are going to refer you. Um, 
it's a good way to keep your salespeople busy and keep them out there, keep them engaged and keep them involved in growing the business. And then shoot the damn video. So again, shoot it on Instagram, share it to Facebook. Um, you can shoot another video on YouTube, do the reels, TikTok videos. Uh, Jamie Jordan's fantastic about his TikTok videos. And the dude's just entertaining as hell. You know, he doesn't give advice or anything like that, but he's the kind of guy you want to do business with. Um, so he, he does a lot of fun videos and fun stuff. So follow some of these guys. Um, another guy named Tom that uh, is doing a great job shooting videos, very creative. I've, I've seen a lot of people do creative stuff. Um, Jay Cesar um, is shooting videos all the time now. And he's mostly promoting products and educating people, but he's just a guy that you like, right? And you're going to want to buy from him. So people, people probably don't watch his videos or listen to his message, but they see him often enough and they make a connection with the guy. And it goes beyond product price and service, which I love because if you can get people to buy from you for something other than your product price or service, that that's a lot of control that you have and your competition can't compete against those things because it's you, it's that personality. It's that thing that they just like about you, that they're going to buy from you. We had a lot of people buy from us because we were a small family owned business. No one over five foot six. That saying offers no benefit to anybody, <laughs> so, but people loved it. You know, it just made a connection, especially if they were short. So selling strategies at work, um, you know, I'm convinced more than ever. You, you got to make it easy for people to make a buying decision and uh, give people an opportunity to buy now. And that means closing and selling in the home. So if you can work up that price, there's no reason why you couldn't work up a price in a home. I could show you systems on anything where you can immediately work up a price and you don't need software for it. In fact, a lot of the software is slowing you down. So a lot of people are prisoners to their software when what you should be doing is selling the job and then entering it into the software when the job is sold, not entering into the software so you can give the customer a price. If you can't give that price in a home, you need to work on your systems for giving a price. There's no reason why you can't. Um, you can bundle your prices. Uh, so it makes it so much easier for customers to make a buying decision. If you bundle the prices, and give them everything that they need all for one price, you don't have to worry about a breakdown. Those of you guys that line item prices and give, don't bundle them and give people multiple options, you're making people try to save money. So when you line item quote and, and you give them different options for say pad on carpet or different options on, I don't know, even pad or surfaces for, for um, installing luxury vinyl. If you give, the more options you give people, let's say you give them options for their baseboards, the more options you give them, especially if they're different prices, you're making their job more complicated and you're forcing them to try and save money, okay? So just make it easy for them to buy, bundle your prices as much as you can. And then don't worry about being accurate with your prices. You got to worry about making sure that your margins are good enough. So you got to do your job costing, making sure you're making enough money. But, you know, I'm talking to guys that have been doing this five, six, seven, 10 years or more. And they say they can't give a price in the home. It's like, what the hell? I mean, you've been doing this your whole life and you can't figure out how much it would cost somebody in the home. I mean, you got to dumb this down, make it a hell of a lot easier to give that price in the home. And what are you worried about being accurate for? You know, nobody has the same wholesale price. The suppliers, I don't care who they are, they're charging everybody different prices, right? And we all know we can negotiate that price. Nobody has the same markups or margins. Nobody's paying the installers the same rate. Um, so there's all these differences within our industry and you're trying to be accurate. What are you trying to be accurate for? What is... Who are you trying to please? Maybe it's the software. Uh, so the software likes what you're doing. Quit worrying about trying to be precise with your pricing and focus more on getting the job and selling. 
And again, it comes down to when you make stuff easy to give a price, then what you're focusing on is just decorating and having fun with your customer. It changes everything. It makes your job so much more enjoyable. Okay. And yes, you can raise prices, even in a tough economy. You just got to learn how to sell. The problem is not that your price is too high. The problem is, is that your presentation doesn't justify what you're charging. So you got to learn how to be a better salesperson and learn how to justify what it is that you're charging. And again, being able to give a price quicker, some people will make that decision quicker versus waiting on your email when if they're waiting on your email, they can get price from other people. I know they have other estimates, but have you ever had anybody cancel an appointment because they already bought from somebody else or have they canceled an appointment because you gave them a price and they just went ahead and went with you? Had it happen multiple times where people had other appointments and they canceled them because I gave them a price, I closed the job, got the sale and walked away and, and gave them a five-star experience, right? All right, guys, it's really important to know the difference between a markup and margin. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this now because I think it's vitally important. I think a lot of people misunderstand it and when they think they're getting a good margin and they're not. Um, so we know we shoot for 40% plus margins in our industry. On carpet, you should be 45 to 50 easily. Um, on hard surface and big ticket, you can lower the margin a little bit when the dollars are so high. But yeah, try to get that 40% plus margin. Um, so here's a quick explanation of markups versus margins. And a question I like to ask people is how do you come up with your price? What do you do? Let's say your cost is $3,300. How much do you determine what you're going to charge? So you've done the math, you figured out that this job for the installation, the material, everything, it's going to be $3,300. I mean, I've talked to people that say, well, we add a dollar to the material, or we add a little bit of money to the labor and just do what feels right. You know, if I'm getting charged a buck 25 for labor, I'll charge a customer $2. You know, there's really no thought behind it. It's kind of thinking about what I can get and what would be fair. You know, so it, it's not thought out very well. Uh, are you adding a markup? Say you're adding 40% or, or even 60% or more. Or do you simply double your prices? Doubling your prices is not bad. That gives you a 50% margin. But if you're to add 40%, and this is a big mistake a lot of people make. Um, let's say you added 40% to the price of the project. Well, if you added 40% to this project, $3,300 cost, that would be $4,620, giving you a profit of $1,320. That's only a 28% margin. If you added 60%, the price of the project would be 5,280. And that would give you a profit of 1,980 or a margin of 37.5%. That's still low, it's pretty weak. So, and 60% sounds like a lot, but it's not. So here's an explanation of how it works. So a 40% margin, to get a 40% margin, you take your cost and you divide it by 60%. So if we took that 3,300, divided it by 60%, that would give us a price of $5,500. That's a true 40% margin. So, and that's $2,200 profit. So the total profit, um, divided by the sold price equals your profit margin. Take a screenshot of this, study this a little bit, understand it, that you need to take your total profit, divide it by the sold price, which was 5,500, and that gives us our profit margin. So in this case, 2,200 divided by 5,500 equals a 40% profit margin. Okay. What we do in coaching, the, the training I have people go through, we set them up at a 55% margin. So it gives them discounts. When you give people the bottom line price first, they're still going to ask you for a discount. You know, even if you meet the price that they say that they're trying to get to, let's say their budget is $3,200 and you come up with a price of $3,100. They'll say, do you have anything for less? 
<laughs> it's good, frustrating as hell. But let's say again, their budget's 3,200 and you come up with a price of 4,200. Then they're going to come back and say, uh, that's, I can't do that. I mean, I can't spend any more than $3,600. So oh, they raise their budget. They all, they do it every time. People will raise their budget, especially to get what they like, get what they want. And there's a lot of ways to get help people get what they want. Um, you know, the biggest secret to uh, the formula to successful sales in the flooring industry, make pricing easy. You know, put pricing on your displays. It really helps a customer focus less on the price and more on the product that they're looking for. You know, it's fascinating. Let's say you come up to a display and there's no pricing on it. So customers see something they like and they say, well, how much is that? Everybody wants to know how much it costs. So you give them a price. You say, well, that carpet's $8 and 30 cents a foot. And they say, oh, okay, well, how much is this one? Well, this one's $6 and 70 cents. Okay. How much is this one? Now, now as a customer, I got to try and remember the prices and, and we're having this conversation about price. So you just now made it about the price, even though it's not on the display because you're forcing me to remember what the cost is. And you're forcing me to have this conversation when, if it's on the display, not only can I see it, I can look for things that are in my price range and this is something every customer will do. I swear to you, they'll do this. They'll look at things that are outside their price range and they'll want to know, they'll start justifying why they should go ahead and spend a little bit more money to get something they really love because this one's in my price range, but I really love this one over here. Okay. So it happens every time the customer will sell themselves. So by not making it about the price, by, by, by not having it on your displays, you're doing just the opposite of what you're trying to do. The other excuse for not pricing displays is it's complicated with price increases. Oh, good Lord. When did anything that was complicated ever be worth doing? <laughs> you know, if you're complaining that it's complicated, well, you're, so is your competitor too. If you're not willing to do things that your competitor's not willing to do, then you can't beat them. You know, Michael Jordan said once he wanted to be the best basketball player in the league, you know, and went to the coach, says, coach, I don't get it. I'm working just as hard as everybody else. And he says, well, I thought you wanted to be the best. So you're doing just what everybody else is and you expect to be the best. You know, the only way to get better than everybody is to do more than what they're doing. So yeah, doing things that are difficult is going to make it better for you. It's also going to make it a lot easier for you. Um, it'll make it easier for you to hire salespeople. It'll make it easier for you to train salespeople and make it easier for them to sell and talk about the price. I love uh, the idea of having prices on your website. It gives customers an idea what the cost will be so they can take the next step. And they're not going to compare you to somebody else because nobody has prices on their website. So who are they going to compare to? But if you have the information, you know, customers love information. And it's very frustrating that you're not going to give them the information because I want them to jump through these hoops to get the information they need. How do you like it when you go shopping and people make you jump through hoops? It's irritating as hell. You know, you don't like that. You don't like be treated that way as a sales, uh, as a customer. You know, you wouldn't want to go to a car lot and there's no prices on the car. So you have no idea what they charge for cars. You know, is, is this model cost more than this one? You want something on there to go buy, something to start looking at. So not having any information, again, it gives the opposite effect. Uh, now, you, the information that you have on your website doesn't have to be accurate. You just have to give people a range, an idea of what they should expect to spend. Tell a couple of little stories on there, but it really helps them make the next move. And usually when you give them information, they want more information. Well, the way to give them more information, they're going to have to reach out to you to get more information. Okay. So you can give them an idea over the phone. Again, you're going to give them a range, give them an idea, learn how to navigate these sales. So again, all, above all, make it easy for your salespeople to give a price and talk about price.
All right. So the Sayath group coaching um, or the one-on-one -on -one accelerator program, let me talk about all this stuff. So we're going to improve your marketing. And there's a lot of things you guys can do that don't cost a lot of money that's going to improve your marketing. Uh, are you going after previous customers? You know, what are you doing? What's your marketing messages? I'll tell you flat out if your website sucks um, or what changes can be made to your website to improve it. So, um, and, and then I've got resources that are doing a great job on pay-per-click advertising, on social media, on SEO. So we've got a lot of resources for you now that is going to help you get better results, uh, improve your sales. I mean, if your margins are, are below 40%, your, your closing rate is down below 40% too, um, you know, then hiring me should be a no-brainer for increasing those things because that additional revenue is going to pay more than pay for any coaching or any anything, any training that you get. So raise your prices. Uh, and that's something very easy to do. Again, once we bundle it, we make it simple, you raise your prices and, and it just, you'll be kicking yourself. It's like, why didn't I do this all along? <laughs> so, you know, it, how much money are you leaving on the table because you don't know how to price things properly because you're so intimidated by the competition and what other people are doing. You know, you got to get to the point where you don't give a damn what other people are doing and just focus more on your customer and the customer experience than your competition. The competition doesn't matter. You do you focus on the customer and how you can give them a great experience. Okay. Um, improve the customer experience. So we got a lot of ways that you could communicate and improve that customer experience. And then the installer experience too, things that'll get you more five-star uh, reviews and improve your installer relationship. Um, you know, all these things, they, they just need simple processes. And when you put them into place, it'll make your business a lot more fun. Okay, and a business just doing 700,000 a year will earn an extra $5,800 a month in profits working with me. So this program doesn't just pay for itself. You're going to wildly increase your sales. You know, I talked to somebody this week that um, he was doing just under just about 700,000. The guy owns a, a $2 million a year business, but he's been stuck at these lower numbers just because these sales, all these things aren't working right. The marketing, the sales, you know, very, very knowledgeable, bright, good looking guy, good looking wife, you know, great business. They just need a little bit of help and um, they'll easily make an extra $5,800 a month just in profits alone. So that doesn't even include sales. So the sales would probably be more like, you know, an extra 40,000 a month in sales. So we can raise the profit, profit margins just to get you that this is the nice thing about raising your prices is every dollar you raise your price that goes in your pocket. That doesn't, uh, that doesn't go towards an expense. It's not a percentage of that dollar that you raise. There's a lot to learn in the business. So um, reach out. Well, that didn't last long. JerryLevinson.com. Just uh, reach out to me, reach out through messenger anyway, and request a one-on-one -on -one call. Let's talk about it. Let's go over your numbers you know, if there's a right fit, I'll tell you what, what it would cost to move forward and do that. If it's not a right fit, that's fine. Um, but you'll get a lot out of the coaching call alone. So I hope you did out of this video as well. You know, follow me, follow the videos, and hopefully you'll be learning how to raise those prices, your margins, and doing a better job. So there's, you can definitely profit now in the flooring industry.